Hi, I'm Dave Camlin, and in this presentation I'm going to outline ideas to do with community music and the civic imagination. Um, so these ideas are things that have developed um, for me since I started undertaking a doctorate in 2011. So they're about a decade's worth of of work that I've that I've written about in in other places in different ways over the over, over the last decade, but which I'm finally bringing together in a, a single book um, in the autumn, which is called Music Making and the Civic Imagination. So in this presentation, I'm going to give a, a brief overview of of, um, of of some of these ideas. So I'm going to touch on music as a complex adaptive system. I want to talk a bit about music and human evolution. I want to talk about music music in as being about different kinds of performance and then I'm going to conclude with something that uh, highlights the, the the situatedness of community music practice and why that's important. Um, what I mean by a, a complex adaptive system is simply that there are we now know that there are hundreds of mechanisms that are, t are involved in uh, most leisure activities and so especially within music there are multiple mechanisms that are all operating together um, we, we tend to think in the in the literature these these the, the most common uh, experience that seems to be reported in in relation to musicking is the experience of what Mercedes Pavlicevich calls magic moments, or those kind of transcendental moments when we feel our sense of self is kind of drifting away on a on a wave of communal feeling with the people that we're making music with. Um, and one of the arguments that I'm making is, is that we can think of some of this as, as, as a kind of diffraction. Diffraction is a, a term from physics that usually means to do with what happens with waveforms when they encounter resistance. The argument that, I'm, that I make is that, um, is that we can think of music making as, as involving or engaging a number of different kinds of waveforms. So as well as obviously sound waves are implicated, we can also... Um, we can also recognise that um, the way that neurobiology comes to be synchronised when people make music also in, it has, has implications in terms of waveform diffraction. So heart rate variability becomes attuned to other people's when we make music together. Alpha and beta waves, it, 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 the emission of alpha and beta waves in the brain becomes synchronised when we entrain rhythmically to other people. And these are all examples of, a, of, of diffraction of these multiple mechanisms that are all acting together at the same time. It, it's why I think music has become uh, something that has endured. You know, we, we think now that the species is 230,000 years old. If you believe Stephen Mythen, then Neanderthals were also were musical in his book, The, the Singing Neanderthals. But, but the, this, this profound sense of connection that people feel when we make music is something that has characterised human evolution. But of course, human evolution has, evo has evolved so far. We might, we might recognise that you know, the, the earliest forms of, of human political affiliation are to do with what anthropologists call the band, which I quite like. Um, or we might think of that as the family and communicative musicality, the, 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 the musical bonds which unite infant and primary caregiver lie at the heart of this kind of sense of, of connectedness, of cohesion. When we make music, we're kind of a we're tuning into each other through the music and through the way that our neurobiology attunes to each other as well. Mm -hmm. But humans evolved this particular um, knack of being able to extend this sense of close personal intimacy with, with much larger groups than other mammals. So chimps and bonobos, our nearest primate relatives, will only um, maintain bonds of trust and affection with small groups, half a dozen or so. Whereas humans, because of our capacity for communicative musicality means that we've been able to extend that to much larger numbers. Robin Dunbar says 150 is the limit, the biological limit of, of, um, of, of such cooperation. And yet, of course, humans have been able to extend bonds of trust and, and attachment beyond Indiv you know, individuals that we actually know so that we can, we can imagine ourselves as part of a people um, 
you know, and that might be, uh, you know, all all the all the all the people that that are particular fans of a particular pop group, or, uh, or or people who support the same football team or belong to the same religion. You know, we're not going to meet all of the people who who share the same beliefs as we do, but we can still feel a sense of trust and connection um, with those people, even though we we have not met them or may never meet them. And the same principle applies at the level of the nation state. So when we when we sing national anthems, we're imagining bonds of connection that are that with other people that we haven't met and will never meet, but that feel the same as the connection that we make with you know, with the people that we're actually making music with. So it's a so in this sense, music is a, a different kind of performance. We can think of I'm going to skip some of this. Um, we can think of music as a as a performance of identity. In this way, so these identities are social identities, the community, the family, because they're to do with the people that are within our actual social networks, people that we actually know and can make music with. These higher levels, at level of people, at the level of nation, um, we have to use an imaginative trick to to, to get the, develop this sense of connection. We can make music, but we also have to attach some kind of imaginative intent. <coughs> in order to be able to form these identities of, of, at a level of people or at a level of nation. And my argument is simply that we can, we, we can use the same cognitive trick, the same trick of the imagination, to imagine ourselves in a, in, in a relationship at a global level. So we can, you know, we can imagine ourselves as cohabitants as a global species with all of the other human beings on the planet as well as all of the other non-human beings on the planet and all of the other non you know all of the other materials on the planet it's the same imaginative trick that we can that we can put to service music of course is as well as being about performance of identity is about the performance of relationships and you, you might you know some of my earlier work around music in three dimensions is is very much around this and especially uh, you know, draws on the ideas that were that were developed by Christopher Small, um, but we can also think of music as the performance of values, and by which I mean particular humanistic values, which we might also call post-humanistic, because they're about um, relationships and values which transcend our immediate uh, our immediate experience um, when we imagine them into being. So love is implicated within music making because of the way our interpersonal neurobiology becomes connected with other peoples when we make music reciprocity as a value is is uh, is is ignited um, because to make music effectively together we have to give and receive we have to express ourselves as well as listening so there's a, a to and fro um, reciprocal reciprocity that's going on when we're when we're performing music and music also is also about the performance of justice when in a non-auditioned context because for music to be effective in a non-auditioned context means that everybody has to be able to take part whatever our level of experience and skill and, and and competence and confidence so the more experienced and the more confident have to be able to modify how they make music in order for the people with less experience and less confidence to be able to be part of the same musicking so everybody needs to operate at a level of the group and that is a way of, of, of bringing to life, of performing notions of, of, of democratic equality because it, it, it's, a, it's a performance of justice. It's, the diff, it's John Rawls' difference principle absolutely in action. We can't, we have, we, there has to be some differences or the music becomes stale and boring. But if, there's too, if there are too many differences, then the, then the music um, it, it, it is unstable. To conclude with that, I just want to finish with this with this point that all music is uniquely situated. I, as a musician, I can only ever be this musician. I can't be any other musician. I can only be me. I can only be this musician working with these people in this place, with these materials, within these cultures and traditions. And that's the same whatever music we're making. And therefore, a better way of thinking about how to approach an understanding of music as a resource for sustainable development is recognising that all music is uniquely different and that's what makes it so special.